soldering the sides to the center section can be quite difficult, but the easiest way to handle this is to be sure that the seam you're going to solder is down below instead of above so that the solder will flow in. And start by soldering just a spot on the backs of both parabolas. You apply the heat in about 15 seconds. It will get hot enough for the solder to begin to draw into the joint. As soon as it draws in, you should withdraw the flame so that it doesn't continue running down on the inside. Here is how it will look after it's built. You can see where the four magnetrons will be mounted. The structure is stabilized by mounting a piece of plywood 13 and a half inches wide along here by 24 inches long with some notches that you might cut out if you want to for making room as you mount the individual magnetrons in their four holes. The mouth of the cannon has pieces of plywood to stabilize the copper sheeting. Each magnetron will be powered by its own high voltage transformer with its 2500 or so volts of windings. One end of these windings is grounded and the other end is what we would call hot. 120 volt input windings and some windings that carry 10 amperes or so at 3 volts to the cathode heater in the magnetron. In addition to the transformer, there is a voltage doubling capacitor and a diode that you will use. The power supply on one half of its cycle from the 2500 volts charges up this capacitor through this diode to ground. In the next half of the cycle, the capacitor is in series with the transformer windings putting approximately 4,500 volts to the magnetron. The magnetron's filament or cathode is heated by the 3.15 volts at 10 amperes. You will need 12 gauge wire or bigger and no more than 6 feet from the power supply that will have to be separate because it's going to be four transformers and quite heavy up to the cultural hygiene machine itself. Because the system is a half-wave system in the form of a half-wave voltage doubler, the transformers will all have to be properly phased so that all four magnetrons fire at the same half of the 60 cycles out of the 240 volt wall socket. When they are properly wired in phase, all four of these high voltage outputs will have little or no voltage between them, but to test, do not try to test it with 2500 volts here. Instead, take a 12 volt transformer with a center tap. Center tap the ground and the other ends of it simulating your 240 volts, but only use 12 volts. That way you'll have only one or 200 volts between any of these and the ground. And if any of these outputs show a voltage between itself and another output that you want to have established as how you'll phase it, then reverse the polarity of the primary windings and then that voltage will disappear. Get all four of these transformer outputs at a zero voltage and then the same voltage between each one of them and ground and it will all be in proper phase. Again, I want to emphasize the importance of grounding the magnetron body 
through the copper horn to the ground on the high voltage ends of the power supplies. When you fire your cultural hygiene machine, position it so it is aimed at the enemy stereo, then step back to the power supply behind the cultural hygiene machine, and then power up the 240 volts, always keeping your hands away from the high voltage cathode wires that carry 4500 volts. Assume that that 4500 volts could arc through the insulation. And now for a few words on microwave safety. Microwaves cause certain body parts to overheat. Prolonged chronic exposure is a hazard to the eyes as it can cause the lens, which does not dispose of heat efficiently, to turn into cataracts. It would take several months of firing for several minutes every day to do that to your neighbors. But for yourself, you should wear a wire screen gown made out of window screen from a hardware store that will cover your head, cover your eyes, and cover your body. Now there's another more indelicate matter. Microwaves are infamous for being able to overheat the testicles, possibly causing some harm. Therefore, when you fire your cultural hygiene machine, always stuff all of your vaudevillian flesh safely inside of a tin can so that the pointing vector or the wave vector 2 pi over lambda does not enter the mouth of the tin can. That is, you'll be standing behind any source of microwaves and there will be no risk that you will accidentally turn your testicles into toasticles. Now for a modicum of metaphysics. In high school physics class, we learn that momentum is strictly mass times velocity. But as we become better educated, we learn that like so many other things in life, it has more generalized meanings with other forms. In Hamiltonian mechanics, it can be the partial of the Lagrangian operator with respect to the time derivative of any vector in an orthogonal basis. By the way, next time a prosecutor is cross-examining you in court and he asks you on what basis this or what basis that, tell him it makes no difference so long as the basis is linearly independent. You will embarrass him because he will have been caught using mathematical terms without knowing what they mean in an attempt to impress people. In quantum mechanics, momentum has more than one definition. It always seems that the study of quantum mechanics, in particular the practice of normalizing solutions to Schrodinger's equation by dividing them by the integral over all of space of the complex conjugate of the solution operated upon the solution itself, would prepare people for careers in the diplomatic corps. We read in the press about normalizing diplomatic relations, and people in the State Department tell us that diplomatic relations are complex. So, why not? By force of this eloquence, just as momentum can take forms other than mass times velocity, fecal excrement can take forms even more disgusting than that which is defecated through the fundament. This is especially true of the fecal excrement that can be defecated from a stereo system. Ladies and gentlemen, please excuse me.